Hi, this is Patrick. In this video, I'm going to talk about chef attributes and make a demo with a CCTL system tuning. This video is for you if you intend to use or at least try to use a chef, such as if you're a developer, a systems engineer, or a student, or anyone who wants to learn, really. You have used chef or seen my chef intro video. You are familiar with Linux directory structure, the command line, that kind of stuff. You understand the data structures, hashes, array, hashes of hashes, because that's what attributes are all about. And for the demo, you will need Vagrant and VirtualBox, which works on uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Why would you want to use or learn attributes? Attributes are a major functionality of Chef. They will allow you to use other cookbooks that use attributes. They give a structure to your configuration, which makes it easier to understand, to read. And as a general thing, they can save a lot of time and headaches compared to systems that don't use attributes. And so if you don't use attributes, you will miss out on a fantastic tool you won't be able to use these many great pre-built cookbooks and you will probably lose time, money, all that stuff. So what are attributes anyway? Attributes are a composed data structure contained in the chef node object. It's actually called node. It's a global, it's accessible from everywhere. And they have different levels of precedence. I'll show you in the demo how, uh, how that works. And here's a link to the document. And as I said, it's a uh, global variable. It's uh, readable, writable from everywhere in Chef. And it's mostly used to pass data to cookbooks. Without further ado, let's do the demo with SysCTL. I recommend that you do the demo at the same time. It just takes a few minutes and it will really improve your learning. For reference, the Vagrant Chef configuration is available on GitHub. Here's the link. And uh, we'll go through a SysCTL cookbook. Uh, which is very similar to what Facebook has set up. And here's a uh, link. And at the end, I'll mess around a bit to see what happens in various situations. Welcome to my um, terminal. Before anything else, I'm going to show you how the chef node objects, uh, object uh, behaves in isolation of actually running chef. So uh, we have this... Uh, object chef node which is created blah 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 and it has these different le levels of precedence and uh, so the way this happens is that if i do node say oh, in this case sysctl i'll use the default level equals uh, sysctl say some something Let's put a raw value and uh, net core. So max con, I'll use that later. Equals 256. Okay, then I do node default and the same thing, but override equals some other value, say 512. If I run node sysctl, if I take the default, no, wait. Uh, reversing it, not dot default. CCTL, that's what I get. Whereas override, that's what I get. The two values, and the final rendering. If I do node uh, CCTL to hash, it's going to take the value of 512, which is stronger. And this actually works if I, e even if I put uh, other values in different precedents. For example, if I put here and something else, VM swappiness equals uh, 10. So it means that in the level override, I'll only have this. And in the level default, I'll have both. It means that the final rendering will B, the value here, no, right, node sysctl, sorry, will be here 512 because it's overridden and here because it's normal. So this is the general overriding mechanism. 
and I'm going to demonstrate right now how to use it in an actual template. And you'll see how it has a higher level of precedence in the role and uh, higher in the recipe than if you set it in the um, what's it called in the attribute. So here was for the little kind of general functioning, and let's show you now step by step exactly what that uh, that means. I'm cre creating this directory. <laughs> CDM directory. Oh, I already made it before. I did some tests. Yeah. Here we go. So, in here, I'm going to create a Vagrant file. And this Vagrant file is going to uh, contain what we need to load a virtual machine and do the actual demo. So, uh, this is a copy-paste and uh, add recipe CCTL. I'm going to say exactly what it does. It runs Ubuntu and it runs Chef on it with uh, cookbooks in the cookbooks directory, roles in the roles directory, and it will run the CCTL recipe. Okay, I'll save this and I'll create the directories and uh, run Vagrant up and you'll see that way exactly uh, what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Create cookbooks, recipes, cookbooks. Uh, no, sorry. Cookbooks, sysctl recipes, cookbooks, sysctl templates default, and cookbooks, sysctl attributes and also create roles. There we go. Use my tree of files. And so we'll start with cookbooks cctl attributes. I'm going to create a default attributes. And actually these two that I just used are great. The, the swappiness and the next net core so max con. So I'll use these as examples. So no default sysctl VM uh, swappiness is 10. No default CCTL net core. So max con is 256. Perfect. So this is the level of standard. And then I'm going to create a template that actually displays these. So node CCTL. Let's do that right away. Um, in templates, default, cctl.conf.erb. This template is generated by Chef. And so I'm going a little bit fast on this. It's uh, The whole point is to demonstrate the, uh, the usage of the attributes, the actual Chef stuff. You can uh, see it in many other videos. cctl sort each do key value. There we go. That's just yeah for the practical application. And I'm also going to save all these files on a uh, GitHub um, repository so you can find them. And equals uh, key value. So this basically is just going to take every one of the lines of the node sysctl and make uh, something equal something as a normal sysctl way. And last thing, I have to actually apply this template. So let's uh, run the recipes, default. I'll put uh, template etc sysctl.conf do um, owner root group root mode 04644 and I'm gonna make it restart sysctl when it changes run execute sysctl dash p and execute sysctl dash p this becomes a resource action nothing 
only a trigger. Okay, we have all this set up. I hope I didn't make a typo. I'm going to show you the tree again. So here are all my files. We have attributes, which set default attributes, these two, uh, two values here. Then we have recipes. The recipe calls the template. And the template here calls the attributes. And because Node is accessible everywhere, it's going to display basically net core so max con equals one within or no uh, 256 or whatever in the actual file so i hope i haven't made, I haven't made any typos and uh let's go oh yeah up okay so this worked uh let's see i'll show you the content of the file i'll run vagrant ssh in another window one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, it's big enough. And I'm gonna go in this, run a vagrant SSH. And now you can cat etc sysctl.conf and see it contains what I put in there. Now, uh, the whole point is th that we can also do some um, override or add some more stuff, etc. So I'm going to do that right away by uh, first setting things in the recipe. So say uh, I want to do node default S net core so max con. I decide it's actually. 257 whatever so this will obviously work I mean vagrant provision you'll see it work right away yeah 257 but the point is not to set it in the same recipe obviously it's if you have another recipe that might uh, that might use it so uh, I'll delete this and let's say I created another recipe in cookbooks. I have like uh, for my like my uh, my nginx. So in this my nginx, I will uh, take the metadata, and it will be name my nginx. Uh, my nginx. And it will uh, depend on sysctl. That's the whole magic. And if it depends on sysctl, I'll show it again. Th that means that if we create in here a recipe, I'll r run Sublime this time, which will do this, uh, the uh, node default sysctl, say, um, was net core so max con I'm gonna put another value 300 and then I do uh, if I do that and then I add this to my run list or say if, uh, yeah like that I'll put chef dot add recipe the uh, my nginx and run this I'll show it back it means it will uh, run both. And because this is in the recipe, it will overwrite what's in the attributes. Let's see that. Yeah, look at that, 300 instead of 256. So that's one of the uses. Like you have one recipe that gives you the default, you, do, you can do the other thing. Another place to change it is, for example, in a role. That's another useful thing because a role is often, is often used say uh, for things like uh, well grouping uh, an access a uh, run list and a bunch of attributes so default attributes are say here and then run list is uh, to run uh, my nginx and my uh, it's a CTL. I run these two, and then I can do say that, for example, in within CTL, 
the, the this one, the net core so max con will be four hundred and twenty. I wrote 50, sorry. And so here, if we look at the different, uh, I'll show you the page again. Here we go. The precedence, one, two, three, four, it means it will be four, it will override it. It will be 450 if I make that roll the run list. Add roll my roll. I think it was called my roll, yeah. So this will run these two cookbooks and set this with a, yeah, these two cookbooks and run the roll of 450. Here you go, 450. So what about these things that I override? Say you think uh, whatever the roll says, you really, really want to have a specific value, so you're very, uh, you're just uh, very adamant about it for some reason. I mean, I don't really recommend that. I'd say set your values once, maybe twice, like have the defaults and have it either in a role or a recipe. But sometimes you might be in a context where you people did weird stuff, and uh, so you have to basically uh, force something else. So here I'm putting override at 300 that regardless of the role, so override in a recipe is 10. So it's definitely going to be 300. Let's rerun this. Here we go, 300. And if I add some random value, say uh, within the role, that's uh, I don't know fs dot file max. I want it to be a bit more than usual. Let's give it a value of uh, I don't know fifty uh, sixty five thousand whatever. And so I will just if I just run this, we will have three values in there. I'll show you right away. Here we go, 10. Thank you. Please uh, subscribe, comment, etc. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments. Thanks. Bye.